This, yeah, there we go. All right. Ooh. All right. Good morning to you. It's good to see you this morning. It's good to have you with us. We are uh, navigating our way through some strange territory, uh, and we continue to discover things on the paths that we had not expected. And so each time we do that, we pause and we adjust and we shift to the left a little or to the right a little, and we keep going. And every now and then it feels like we find smooth water and then all of a sudden we're stuck again. And so we'll keep navigating as best we can. We'll keep doing our best to be online and in person. And the more that we attend to care for one another, uh, the longer we will be able to do that. Uh, we have been, for those that are joining us online, um, Comcast is experiencing some internet issues this morning and the first service buffered a lot. So we apologize that that might be happening. Rest assured, we've checked our end and we don't think it's us. Um, we have met the enemy and he is they. How is that? I don't know what that would do. It's good to have you here this morning. We are thankful to gather in person once again. And as we gather for worship, uh, let's stand as we uh, sing our opening hymn, but also a reminder because I should have said this first. Um, you're welcome to sing, but we invite you to sing softly in your mask, not loudly. I am the worst at this, and so I will be over here trying to soften myself. Um, I will let you regulate yourself. So I invite you to stand as we sing. Oh.
Hmm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promise, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We gather as one body, witnesses to God's love for all of humanity, one family. Throughout the season of Epiphany, we will confess our faith using one of the church's earliest creeds. Please join me. We are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all who have been baptized have put on Christ. There is no Jew or Greek. There is no slave or free. There is no male or female, for we are all one in Christ. True unity comes when we realize we are deeply connected and stand in solidarity. Our baptism is an end to estrangement both from God and neighbor. There is no us, no them. Everyone is a child of God. You are a child of God. We are all children of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Thank you. There we go. Welcome. Children, please come join me for our children's message this morning. Come on up and help me. All right. So I have a bag of useful things. Shalom, I need your help again. I need your help. You were so helpful the first service. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I have a bag of useful things that I need your help with this morning, okay? And we can have everybody in the congregation help us. All right, so the first useful thing is what? What is it, Demba? A brain boot, right? And would these, I bet these would be super helpful in running a race. Think? I'm seeing some head shake no. What do you think they'd be helpful for? What would they be useful for? The rain, that's right. They'd be useful for stopping in puddles and, and having fun in the rain, right? Well, I have another useful thing. How about this one? Is this one useful for walking in the snow? Climbing mountains, maybe? Well, what, what is this one useful for? It's a high heel. We, where would we wear this? Noah, where would we wear this, do you think? Could we wear it to church? Maybe. Or a fancy party? Do you think you could wear this to a fancy party? Yeah, that'd be a good useful shoe for a fancy party. Well, how about this one? This one, I think, is a good church, church shoe. Where, what, Temba, where would I wear this? It's an ice skate. I'd use it for ice, wouldn't I? Yeah, these are great for ice skating. They help us when we want to ice skate. Well, I think, you know, I think this one's a good running shoe. What do you think? Where would I wear this? Leah? At the beach. These would be a great beach shoe. Not a winter shoe, not a running shoe. Now, these might be good for running, right? Yeah, these would be helpful for running maybe or exercising. And then I've got a good comfy shoe. 
Could I wear these? Where would I wear these? What do you think, Camilla? At home when I want to be comfy. That'd be useful to keep my feet warm. I have one more, I think, in here. What about this one? Yep, they're kind of like a flip-flop, aren't they? They could, you could also wear them at the beach or at the pool. Good summer shoe, not good for winter, right? No. Well, all of these things are useful and they help us. They help keep our feet safe and protected for the right things, right? If we wore one of these in the snow, that might not keep our feet very warm, would it? Um, yeah, last week, Pastor Dave ran through the snow with shoes that weren't real great for the snow. And he kept ha having to empty out the ice from his shoe. I thought, hmm, that would, these would not be good for that. Well, did you know what? The church is like a bag of useful things. Did you know that? That the church and all the people are like, are like all these shoes, all these useful things. Because each one of us is different, right? We all, we look different. We have different gifts. Some of us play beautiful music. I can't even read music. Um, some people draw beautiful things or decorate beautifully. Some people give great hugs. Some people aren't really crazy about hugging. So we all have different gifts. And do you know what? God made all of us with all of our different gifts to make the world a better place and to share all of our different gifts with the world around us to make the world a better place. Isn't that cool? God was really wise. Well, I want to give thanks to God for all the gifts that God has given us in you because you are a precious, unique treasure that is given to the world to make the world a better place. And I thank God for that. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for shoes. Please protect the feet of those who don't have shoes. Thank you for our gifts. And help us to protect and care for the world and all your people to make this place a better place. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up and helping me with all of these things. Our first reading today, I'm going to read from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into Christ. In, into the one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or, th or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot says, if the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the smell be? 
But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then the deeds of power, then the gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. All. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret. Strive for the greater gifts. Word of God, word of life. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. Grace to you and peace from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. While I was studying these texts and reading various commentaries this week, I ran across this, um, this commentary or sermon or writing um, by a priest, Michael K. Marsh, and I was struck by these words. He writes, while politics may not be an appropriate uh, um, topic for polite conversation, I don't think it can be avoided in a faithful conversation, and here's why. Regardless of what politics might mean today and regardless of how it is practiced today, its most basic concern is about the ordering of relationships. It's about the way we live together and get along. It's about people. Those concerns are central to the practice of Christianity. We believe that God has something to say about how we live and the way we relate to one another. 
We open ourselves to God's ordering of lives, of our lives and our relationships. And in that regard, the incarnation, that is, the embodiment of God in humanity is a deeply profound political statement. The life of Christ is a political statement that reorders our relationships with God and with each other. In short, it teaches us and shows us a way of being. Now to be clear, this is not a statement about any political affiliation or party, but it does call us to to reflect on the politics of Jesus and to let the politics of Jesus challenge, critique, and even shape our own personal response to to politics or the way we live in the world. Jesus' identity began not with some party affiliation, but with his baptism. Jesus came out of the waters of baptism, and the Holy Spirit descended on him, and a voice declared, You are my beloved Son, and with you I am well pleased. And then directly after his baptism, the Holy Spirit sends him into the wilderness where he is tempted by what I would argue are the greatest corruptors of politics in any age. Materialism, wealth, power, and self-interest. And Jesus overcame all three, materialism, power, and self-interest. And then as Jesus leaves the wilderness. His very first sermon after the wilderness is from this text in Isaiah. He chooses this text to set the stage for his life and ministry. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Children of God, beloved of Christ, baptized in Christ Jesus, anointed and called by the same Holy Spirit, these words from Jesus are also for you. This is the path Jesus chose to take for you. On this path, there are no boundaries, no favorites, no one who is left out. Jesus' agenda is not influenced by who is good and who is bad, who is an outsider or who is an insider. It doesn't matter to Jesus who you are or what you have done or left undone. Jesus lived out the love of God for you because God loves you. And Jesus lived out the love of God for your enemy because God loves your enemy. Jesus lived out the love of God for the person who you disagree with because God loves that person you disagree with. God In Jesus lived out love for the world because God loves the world. And as Paul wrote to the Corinthians, just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many members. And all of you have unique and precious gifts. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. And the members of the body that may seem weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body we think are less honorable, we must clothe with greater honor. This is Jesus' politics. 
And Paul goes on to say, God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior members. If one suffers, all suffer. And if one is honored, all can rejoice together. At the heart of Jesus' politics is this question. Where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? This is the question that drives and directs Jesus' life and ministry. If there is hurt, that's where Jesus goes. So we might ask ourselves, how is our church's mission similar or different from Jesus's? Should it be the same? Should it be different? Jesus was willing to break chains that held people captive. And it is because of his willingness to break open these systems of oppression and pain and sin that Jesus was arrested and nailed to the cross for us. Not only did Jesus' words and life declare God loves you for who you are, not what you have done, not what you do, not what you earn, not how powerful you are, but these words also are a gift to us because they set the stage for our own lives and ministries in the world. Because each one of us is created with a unique and precious ability to make a difference in this world. To make a difference in the lives of those who are hurting. In Luke 5, Jesus says, Those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. Where does it hurt? Are we willing to go there with Jesus? You see, everything that Jesus did from that moment on was grounded in the context of freedom for the oppressed and new life for those bound by sin, bound by this world. And so I ask you, followers of Jesus, do you want to see our world transformed? I would suggest trying to begin your day by asking this question, where does it hurt today? If we entered every difficult or divisive situation with that question, how would that transform that situation? If we let that question be our guide, how would that transform our relationships? Think about the places where you get the most irritated or where you let your anger stew a little longer. I asked this question of our confirmation students this week, and we, we talked about how the people closest to us and our families, our coworkers, our friends, it's in those places where we feel the pain most closely or deeply. And we also let that anger flare more easily. We get irritated more easily. But what if we began our conversations or our responses by wondering what is hurting in the other person? Would that change our response? No matter where we turn, there's hurt in the world. Sometimes big hurts, sometimes little hurts. But if we began every day by asking God and Christ to help us respond to the hurts in our own little piece of the world, how might that response change or transform someone else? It's about the way we live together and how we get along. It's about people's lives lived out in a way that reveals that God is present and God loves the world. Last week on Monday, which was Martin Luther King Day, I was listening to a story on the radio 
And it was a story about people whose lives had been shattered by someone who chose hate and violence. And yet, the people whose lives had been ruined and shattered by this violence saw the hurt in the person who chose hate. And they recognized that the only way to meet that hurt was to not respond with more hate, but rather with forgiveness. They chose to forgive and to love, and they voiced that forgiveness to the person who hurt them. That isn't the easy path. You see, hate is easy. Victimizing those who are different than us, putting them in a category of us and them, that is the easy road. When the world tells us to choose revenge or power or wealth or hate or separation, the more difficult path is choosing love, choosing forgiveness, choosing to meet hurt with patience, compassion, forgiveness. If we knew the hurt behind a person's decision or action, perhaps we could listen more than speak, cooperate more than need to be right. Growing up as a missionary kid in Cameroon, there were many constant interruptions in my parents' lives. Hurting people were at our doorstep all day long. There were people coming to ask for money or food. There were elderly who would drop by every single morning at a certain time, and mom would be ready with a cup of coffee and something to eat. I remember riding with my dad to take somebody who showed up at the doorstep who needed to get to a hospital, and now. And dad would take us kids along so that we could be witnesses to this. I remember at age five helping my mom bandage up a baby who had been severely injured. I recall missionaries who would travel through, and we didn't have cell phones, so they couldn't call ahead, but they would drop in unannounced, and mom and dad would drop everything to make sure they had a place to sleep and a meal and good conversation. Our house, since there were no hotels or inns, our house became the inn for weary tra travelers or Peace Corps workers. And as a child, it was hard sometimes to share my parents with the world they were called to serve. I'm not sure that I was always so thankful for it as a child because it meant that they had to go do something when we were in the midst of something together, maybe playing a game. They would drop everything to meet the need. But now, as I look back, I give thanks. I give thanks because my parents showed me in big and little ways how God loves a hurting world through us. Today, children of God, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. For Jesus has indeed set you free. Raised from the dead, Jesus Christ destroyed the power of sin to hold you. The power of sin to hold you captive to this world. And in the waters of baptism, you are declared beloved of Christ. And the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, was poured out upon you to bring release to the captives, good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom for the oppressed, and to declare that this year is the year of the Lord's favor. 
because you are claimed and called by God to where it hurts. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Thanks be to God. Amen. all we could ever see worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever bring we live for you There is no
invite you to stand as we together confess before God our sinfulness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. We confess our struggle to love our neighbor in word and deed. We confess our failure to bear witness to God's kingdom with our lives. We confess our desire to put our will before your will. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. I invite you to be seated. As a part of our offering time this morning, I will be setting an offering plate on a stool in the front, and as the music plays, you are invited to come forward and, and place your offering in the plate. If you give uh, electronically, if you give automatically through the electronic sites that we have, there is a little card often, yeah, a little yellow card in the pocket that you're invited to bring forward as, as a sign of your gift. But as we gather, we do so always recognizing that this is a moment that we acknowledge and return to God the gifts we have already received sharing for the good news of the world, the gifts that God has given us to make a difference. Let us worship God now with our offering.
I invite you to stand as we pray. As a part of our praying time after each petition, there will just be a space for self-reflection. And so we invite you into this time of reflective prayer. Gracious God, we gather in this time to lift our voices, our hearts, our spirits to you. We ask you to touch those parts of the world that need your grace, your hope, your peace. God, hear the cries of our hearts as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world where they suffer from violence or weather or famine. We pray for those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit, remembering today especially Michelle and Dean and all we name before you in our hearts or out loud. Gracious God, we pray to be better stewards of your gifts. Gracious God, we give thanks for those who witness to your presence here and now. Loving and gracious God, you have set loose your gifts in the church a bag full of useful shoes each of us designated differently gifted differently sent to different places to bear witness to a grace and a power and a love that releases us that releases us from a need to chase materialism self-interest and power setting us loose from that that self-seeking place God help us to listen to your voice help us to see where you send us help us to bridge those divides that we define so easily and help us to walk that hard path so that you would be seen more clearly more present And God, as sometimes we struggle to pray, help us always to remember the words that your Son taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I just want to make a couple of quick announcements as we prepare for a week of ministry as we go forth from this place. One is a reminder that next Sunday is our annual meeting, and we will gather by Zoom at noon. So following the second service, there is space enough to get home and we encourage you all to join us online for our annual meeting. Again, it is Zoom and so we will do our best to be attentive to time because we too have been Zoomed out. Um, so we encourage you to join. There are annual reports in the back and I want you to take a look at those. Uh, they are about four times thicker than you're used to, but that's not because they have words in them because we want to share the joy of the pictures of this year in a year when it felt so strange. See what actually happened. Take a look and know how your church was active sharing the love of God with the world. There is not as yet a directory in it. Um, in the midst of the COVID and the, and the shutting down and the change and all that, we had to push everything back. The, the uh, uh, directory will be available next week and it'll just slide in here. We will print that and next year we will work to have it as a part of that. But just so you know, the second is, uh, the second announcement is this, starting on February 6th in between services, we will be having an adult forum reading through the book 
C.S. Lewis's The Great Divorce. Um, and it is subtitled, Take a Fantastic Bus Ride Through Heaven and Hell. Um, it is a search for what it looks like in the afterworld, a wondering about what is truly good and right and what is evil and difficult. And so I invite you to join us in between services starting on the 6th. Uh, Renee and Leslie will be leading us in that study. Uh, if you need a copy, there are copies available. Otherwise, it's a good book to have around in times like this. It is a good, quick read. Those are all the announcements. There are many more in the bulletin that you have. Um, we will also post those online, so be aware of that. And now, receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, strengthen your faith, increase your hope, deepen your love, and free you for service. Amen. Let's sing. So go with Christ into a worry world and share some good news. Thanks be to God. Yay.